titled Hacking International Networks and Systems Using VoIP. And I guess, can anybody identify what these old timey things are? Oh, no. oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, perfect. All right, very good. Now, what's this thing? PAP2, VoIP, right. So traditionally, uh, a lot of people believe that you can't really use modems and VoIP adapters very well together um, because there's a lot of uh, a lot of problems like um, lots of problems uh, compression uh, things dropping out uh, you know just you can't maintain a carrier it'll try to it'll just sit there and try to renegotiate over and over and over again and you know that's one of the things that we you know kind of worked on to try to solve right. And, and you know, plus, besides, nobody even use modems anymore. Right. right? What's, the, what's this internet thing, you know? Right, right. <laughs> Everybody hooks everything up to the internet now, right? Yeah. No one drops their carrier. Right. No one. So, but there's some ways that you can actually fix this, that you can actually, there are some variables that you can set that'll make your connections uh, a little bit better. And that's like, I guess we'll skip that one. Um, like what? This? Yeah. What well, here, we're going to show that we it got, is we got, actually we got, possible. We have a whole bunch of video and stuff like that for you to kind of enjoy. I mean, because, I mean, really, you really can do modems over VoIP, and uh, what's really kicking about it is you can get some good speeds. Like 28.8, I've gotten 33.6. <laughs> and yes, my ANSI blows. My ANSI emulation. That's not my name. <laughs> All right, anyway. So as you can see, you can still get and maintain really fast network connect or modem connections. Now, where can we go with this here? I just quit that. As you can see, we're, we're displaying all the BBSs that still exist in Texas. Are there actually BBS in Texas? Yes, there are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you have to have um, compression disabled. So you have to use something like MU law or A law, something that's, you know, obviously. GSM sucks. Yes, GSM will absolutely kill. Uh, it, so, uh, some adapters, uh, they have a special setting for fax machines, so you'll dial like star 99, and it'll kind of set up the modem in a pre-configuration so that you can send a fax over it. Uh, like the PAP2, if you do star 99 on that, it'll automatically disable echo cancellation. But if your adapter doesn't do this, then you can, um, you know, manually go in and tweak it. And of course, you use a provider that you have good latency between, as Consistent best as possible. Latency. Consistent yeah, and preferably not dropping every other freaking packet. Um, like, for example, for the Telefree project, we're using a VoIP provider based out of, was it France or India? Some place. Yeah, right. some place in Europe. And so we have the, the transatlantic leg, which is always constant. So you're always going to get that constant latency going on there. So, you know, it evens things out. And then, of course, uh, Make sure you put AT at, at K. Yeah, the you modem. the modem. Uh, a lot of times you can use the error correction and whatnot to help you get and maintain a uh, good solid connection. But uh, you want to. But what the AT at K does, it actually turns off data compression. You don't need data compression in a compressed stream. It just makes things worse. <laughs> All right, and then there's some variables that you just can't um, uh, really address with no AT command set. Um, like if you're dialing into India, for example. Did they have a crosstalk there? Uh, probably a little. <laughs> I've, I've heard it. <laughs> so what can you do? So now we've got a modem hooked up. And what the hell are you going to do with it? Where are you going to call? Well, you could, uh, you could hook some stuff up to the modem. Maybe you would, could hook up a credit card machine and call over VoIP. That would be a terrible idea. Um, you could, you know, maybe start up a BBS and not do very much with that. Um, and you can see if your buddy still has that BBS or that old hacker BBS. Run Fidonet, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. right. Right. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So you could do that. Um, but there's an entire world out there of, uh, you know, of a lot of people don't typically dial outside of the United States. So there's lots of other things to dial out up there. But why? So, yeah. I mean, I would. Absolutely. So, That's why I'm here. So, Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. TiVo and, right. Yeah. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Correct. 
Um, now, the connections that you're making aren't exactly, you know, light speed, but we're not doing PPP, we're not trading wares or downloading porn, it's text. And, or, I don't know of any X25 networks doing porn, but... <laughs> 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 so, let's see what we have here. And these are mostly non-IP, uh, typically, networks that we typically play on. And I think the next one is the... Oh, oh so, we're going into X25. Okay. So, Basically, um, one thing that me and Jay Falcon started talking about, in America there used to be a lot of uh, X25 networks like Telenet and TimeNet and stuff like that, and we said, gosh, I wonder if there's still any of those out there, kind of thinking, you know, well, I, I mean, doubt it. Well, you know, a lot of these networks were around, you know, 70s, early, or throughout the entire 80s. Right. You know, we used to call, you know, a thing called PC Pursuit, and, right. uh, you know, <laughs> like <that. laughs> nice. You know, it's uh, you know, you drop twenty bucks a month, and during the off hours between six p.m. to seven a.m., you'd be able to call do out, call through other out dial modems, and they're, they're places places in like you know New York, Chicago, Denver, Seattle, um, all these different places. So you connect to um, the the Sprint network or Telenet. You, We've already dialed all the Sprint numbers, and they are gone. <laughs> oh, the X25? I think you might be right. Yeah. Um, so it's also <laughs> being used. <laughs> it's also being used. Uh, a lot of the countries, for instance, like in India and whatnot, they already have the network infrastructure in place. So it gives them a means. Like um, uh, one of the providers, they use an X25 network to piggyback. Uh, PPP connections and stuff like that to get you know citizens and whatnot onto the internet. So that's the piggybacking. Well, they, they've already put the, they've already put the money into the infrastructure. So right. you know it's just a matter of um, essentially. And X25 networks are a big modem pool. Are used for all kinds of interesting things: banking, corporate systems, ATMs, uh, of course. SCADA. Everybody likes to talk about that. So um, let's see what's out there. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of these networks um, have equipment hooked up, and they're not usually terribly secured very well. We've seen some really out of band stuff. Right. Kind of scary. You know, they think it's on an X25 network that nobody knows about, so why put a password on that router? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. But this isn't an X25 talk. I mean, we're, we're just touching on it real quick. You know, we're just touching on some of the basic terminology. Um, when you use X25 networks as opposed to, you know, like AX25 where everybody has a, a TNC, which is their pad, and then they all talk, whatever. On regular telephone X25, you have an X28, which is called a pad. Um, and essentially, that's your, your little base point, And then that talks X25. You, it's Alex, like a kind of a command table for you to enter addresses to connect to other machines within that particular well, network. Yeah, um, in, a, in a way, I, I would think it's more like um, well, like we the PPP, like X twenty eight is the PPP to talking to TCP. In a way, in a way. Okay. It's, well. yeah. <laughs> so, but when the, so when you call these uh, X twenty five networks, instead of an IP address, you have an NUA, and that's a network user address. Um, just a string of numbers, okay. uh, perfects by a, a DNIC. Uh, NUIs are uh, essentially... They log you into the network that you want to use. passwords. Right. They aren't always necessary. A lot of systems uh, will let you connect and use their network without an NUI, but then once you're connected, the system's connected on that X25 network if, uh, may or may not let you connect based on the fact if you have an NUI or you don't have an NUI. And DNIC, um, I'll let you explain that. Uh, DNICs are essentially um, basically what, what defines a subnet in an X25 network. Um, essentially, Manson. you have, you know, like you, you know that a, like a 12, a dot, 12 dot, uh, dot dot slash 8 is going to be um, AT&T or NASA orig origin. Uh, right. subnet. For instance, if you kind of get almost like a like, uh, area code, kind of, because you know, like, too, is it yeah. 310 is what, Canada, I think, or is it 301? Well, That's anyways, so the first three numbers will be the uh, country, and then the last will typically be uh, 
use for identifying other networks, but the first three, so you know what country. Almost every country has a DNIC associated with it. Like these DNICs. Right. So you can see like China is 460, and then if 4603 is China Pack. So these are all the different X25. I mean, the list is absolutely huge. <laughs> so we just included a few. So, um, so here we're going to show a little video of um, what you can actually connect up to. And I think there's still a few around. So this one's Japan. We haven't really explored this one that much. Um, uh, we don't really know a whole lot about it. That's the one thing, too. You find all these weird networks, and it's sometimes hard to find any documentation on them. Or you find these, you know, uh, to find out how they're being used or what they're being used for. And usually, I mean, you Google them up, and that's, I mean, a lot of the stuff we found is off Google, essentially. And, you know, you might find like one place, one application that might give you a login to uh, just to their service. Right. And the networks tend to be used for various things. Some, but some of them deal more with like banking and stuff like that. Um, other ones, uh, large corporations, and stuff like that. So, and this is actually connecting to the pad. Um, right there is the NUI command, but I didn't specify any ID that I wanted to use. I just wanted to show uh, how you do it. So as you can see, when you're connecting up to the pad, it's kind of giving you just like a command layer to uh, get uh, connected. Now this one right here uh, is in South, uh, South Africa. Africa. Man, as you can see, it doesn't even let you on right up front. Um, this one just died. Like, you probably can't dial into this network anymore. <laughs> um, they just killed it. It was Australia. And the government used it a lot, and they just recently shut it down. Um, actually, you can probably still dial into it. But, um, These are just some of the some of the many prompts, and you can see that there's a, a difference in, uh, for each country, because usually these networks, you know, they, they span the entire country, and you know, they'll have prompts that are you know, sort of fitting towards uh, their language. Right. Now, on this one, you'll notice you keep doing the set command, because I'm just trying to get some output from the pad. What I'm going to do here is, on this particular network, they have these test NUAs that you can connect to. And it's just for testing out your terminal connections and whatnot. And so whatever you type in, it'll echo back. Now, while that's not very interesting in itself, it gives you an idea of the, in, the way the NUA is structured. Like, I can't see it from here, but I can look at that. And now I might be able to use that in the future to scan out the rest of the network to see what other systems are out there. So. And I might have made some of these videos a little long, but. Yeah, I think it's almost done on this yeah. one. Um, so as you can see, um, and remember, this is all over VoIP. Uh, it's really easy to dial into all these fun little networks. And we're just kind of showing the limited pad stuff and just uh, actually connecting. Um, this one's used for uh, air transport communications used by airliners. I think iPass uses them too. Oh, uh, yes. I actually, I, I think it connect up. See, so I'm using, actually, this is a public access NUI that uh, people use to connect up to this uh, ISP in Hong Kong. Now, so I've logged in. I've entered the NUA. Well, I entered the wrong NUA. Or not, yeah. Let's see what it does here. Okay, so we connect up to Hong Kong and we get this nice little PPP connection. Now you see it at the very top there, or I think I actually highlight it in a second, um, where it says call connected to. That's, it's kind of taking that, in, it's redirecting the original NUA that I put in and then connecting it to that, that NUA. So basically, using that, I can now, I now know more about the network and I can actually scan it a little bit more, that part right up there. So I think I just connect to it. And I've never actually tried to make a PPP connection to this server, but I don't really care. <laughs> I'm going to do PPP over VoIP to Hong Kong. That sounds like such a brilliant idea. But I've done much sillier stuff, so. I think this one's almost over. And uh, this one's in India. And 
remember that picture that I showed you with their fun phone lines? It is incredibly difficult to connect. So I just took a screenshot. And this is British Telecommunications. This one's used a lot for banking. Um, and it's owned by the same, well, actually, is, I think, yeah, it's owned by the same company who did uh, TimeNet, I believe, isn't it? Absolutely. BT? Yeah, yeah, BT. So uh, it's good to see in Europe they're still doing lots of X25. And that's another interesting thing, too. There's people all over, like, we run into Russian hackers who are doing this kind of stuff and uh, on their own networks uh, and across the world. There's another place that was hard to connect to. And did you pick, this is a corporate, this is actually a private um, network uh, owned by Quest. So there are actually X25 networks in America, believe it or not. And then I think we're almost done with this video. ROPA, or RPOA, all righty. Um. So, finding this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like for INET, you know, usually a lot of these countries still have um, basically maybe like three digits, like, you know, equivalent to our 800 numbers or uh, 301, you know, 611. Or like 411 or, or something 411, like that. Um, to call into the X20, their, X, their packet network, their X25 network. And, you know, three-digit dialing doesn't work for international calls. So we were having to look for, well, a direct dial into their network. So for, for India, for example, uh, essentially we went to their phone directory. Now, India, uh, I don't know if I have an internet connection here or, or I do, but well, uh, you, can, you can go to that website up there and you can actually drill down all the way down to their city and you can type in modem and it'll show it'll, it'll any, search it, and tell you where they are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you type in, you know, dial up, it'll show everything, everything that has a dial up notation in their phone directory. And a lot of this stuff. It's kind of amazing. Right. Actually, it was kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, you go to a place and search for modem and it just gives you all the dial ups. That's awesome. Um, the, uh, uh, so a lot of times you can just search for, you know, key terms, uh, you know, dial up modem x.28 pad or x28 Russia. And then a lot of times you can find these or you'll find other hacking groups like getting together and talking about it and giving the numbers to each other. So and you can really find helps, hundreds of them. And it really helps to use the localized version of it because it gives oh, yeah. a preference to whatever language uh, right. that you're trying to explore. All right. So. Now that we're connected up to the network, we can start, you know, looking for other things that are connected up to the network. So you can use a thing called an NUA scanner, and it's pretty straightforward. The idea is to you take a known NPA, and then you increment the NUA number. So let's just say our target, we know something's at, uh, you know, 10,000. Well, try 10,001, 10,002, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, and also to research what's been done out there. Um, you know, th you know th back in the 80s, we wrote a lot of uh, e-zines, a lot of text files are, are out there, and all that information is feasibly still valid, um, right. like DATEXP. I think there was one article in FRAC uh, where it actually has a list of NUAs, and you know, and you, just go and you just saw the network running, so try them out. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and you'd be very surprised. Absolutely. Um, and the thing to remember about, about NUIs is, or, or NUIs are allow you to make, um, it's just sort of like a calling card, essentially. You know, you log in, you're actually going to pay for that call. Well, you can make a collect call just by dialing zero, putting zero, your DNIC, and then the address that you, and, and the NUA that you want to look at. So, so it actually works amazing like a lot like the phone system. There is a, a situation where when you're calling another computer system by NUA, they have to accept the charges for that call. And some places actually will say, well, we, well they uh, refuse, you know, refuse to call altogether. Then you know right away there's something there, but it wants me to log in, and I don't really have a login, so I guess I won't be seeing what kind of legacy gears on that. So. Yeah. And then, you know, like, you know, like for uh, data pack, Every place has a topology. Um, the Hack Canada guys, they, they really mapped out uh, their X25 network. And uh, you can buy, they have it broken down by... By city. By city, In or city, or, or province, or whatever they want to call them. And you can... <laughs> 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 this is the 
U.S. <laughs> you, you, yeah, blame Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, essentially, you just uh, you would look at you can say that well anything that's inside of this, these first three range. digits, right? We know it's in be, Ontario or yeah, whatever. Exactly. Uh, and then the scanner. Oh, the scanner. Yeah. And this is like, um, we're such dorks that we actually write software to scan these networks. And this is one of our pieces of software. And this is uh, doing that one in um, Germany. Um, oh, it takes forever to connect, remember? Just skip to the middle. Yeah. There you go. That's what it looks like. All right, well, here. There you uh, go. Skipping, skipping. <laughs> It goes really fast. And unfortunately, this network, if you enter four invalid NUAs, it disconnects you. Some networks you can connect up to, and they'll just let you stay on indefinitely, like uh, the Russian network, which I actually meant to put a video in here for. But as you can see, it's just trying to connect to when it dropped me off. But it just goes through sequentially looking for valid systems and whatnot. I think it's the end. Just yeah. keep on going over. It, but it does it so fast. I mean, it's not like uh, Especially if, it's not it, like if if you can remain connected for any length of time, like the Russian network, you can connect up and you can stay on for 12 hours if you want scanning their network, and they typically any don't won't drop you, and then you'll just find weird little interesting things. Um, yeah, it should just go. Oh, as you can see, it just kind of gets blurry. Yeah. Oh. Die war video. Oh yeah. All right, so what else can you do? That was, you know, so we're doing some X25 stuff that's, you know, fairly interesting. So what else can you do here? Um, um, can anybody guess what is going on here? This is something traditionally 80s, but this is software that I've written. Oh my God, very good. So um, you have this VoIP connection. You can make extremely cheap calls to anywhere in the world. You kind of get where this is going. Oh, and you see, I added the C name lookup. I really like that feature. Um, anyway, that's not about this talk. But anyways, uh, um, so you can plug. yeah, shameless <laughs> plug for my own software. So this is a piece of software called iWar that uh, I wrote a few years ago, and it does a lot of the same features that Tone Loke and all that, which are awesome. Um, and uh, so you got all this VoIP connection. You can do tons of cheap calls. Um, I marked that as a sex line for some reason, but it's all fake numbers. Um, <laughs> let's go on to the. Yeah, it's right there. Mm, here, I'll let you take it. Um, why is this an idea? Well, you know, essentially, you have all these VoIP providers, and we're talking for a lot. You know, you slap down maybe 10, 10 pounds or ten. Well, we're paying in euros. Uh, yeah, for, what was it for, for your kids, say, 20, say bucks. ten bucks, twenty bucks, and you can call a lot of these places for you know for months uh, <laughs> on that ten or twenty bucks, um, and usually a lot of these places will even have a, a list of countries, like twenty, thirty countries that you can call for free. Uh, I mean, there's certain restrictions. For certain to landlines, it. usually, yeah. Yeah, certain restrictions to it. It has to be landlines. You can you can only call. Or you can only be connected to them 300 minutes every week. So you yeah, but you're, a little bit. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, and then, you know, you can, but these are places around the world. I mean, use VoIP. Why not? It's, it's cheap. We're talking like fractions of a penny, even if you call someplace like you know, Iran, you know, which, which isn't, isn't on anybody's friendly list. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe North Korea, but, but who knows. I think a big thing to hear is that um, you can also, you don't have to use American VoIP providers. There's tons of ones in Europe that, like for instance, as he was pointing out, um, Iran, uh, you know, we decided we want to dial uh, Iran a lot and we didn't want to go through an American company for some mysterious reason. So we decided to uh, use European providers that wouldn't, you know, be as hostile to us. Um, supervision. Oh. Um, so whenever you're calling a lot of these places, you know, you say you get a busy signal or you get an error message, you sit tone, whatever. Uh, if the call isn't completed, meaning somebody on the other end didn't pick it up, you're not being charged for it anyway. So when you're doing large amounts of dials, a lot of these places aren't going to pick up. It's going to ring out. And the ones that even do pick up, you're going to be on the phone with them for all of a few seconds. So yeah, it's going to be cheap. I mean, literally. Cheap, very cheap. quick. Yeah. Right. Um, does the, uh, I, I think it's, it's one minute billing, but, uh, but even still, really? it's, 
Well, it might. But it, but it have to answer. <laughs> right, right. So a lot of times, it, yeah. A lot of times it didn't even answer. So, so and this is actually what Tone Look, what he's about to show here. Um, one, of, one of the things that was in Tone Look was uh, a thing called Tone Maps. And I'm not sure if many people, uh, many people remember it or not, but uh, it kind of uh, gives you a graphical representation of what some of these prefixes in outside, you know, outside the United States have. Um, kind of go into one here. So this is a map of uh, the Kremlin. Uh, the, the, basically the prefix area for the Kremlin. And you can see with the yellow dots, or the orange dots, or whatever, those are the actual carriers. And then red's busy, or not connecting, or whatever. Some grays in there, but you know, you can see the density of modems. Yeah, it's kind of weird, because sometimes you, you'll, you'll look at these tone maps, and then you'll, you'll pick out like a weird pattern of where maybe it was like a big dial-up pool for some company or, or something like that. Like in lower center, there's two that are sort of diagonal to each other. Each other. The chance there probably is a, like maybe a, a cluster of them sitting right there, or, or at least within those two uh, 100 blocks. Right. Um, this one was a uh, map of uh, Buckingham Palace's uh, prefix. He did it on the 4th of July because he thought it was appropriate. <laughs> um. And you see there's a lot more modem activity there. Uh, a lot of stuff that uh, was actually in those were... Well, again, you've, we found um, building management systems, um, yeah, uh, dial-up pools, you know, all kinds of stuff. Routers that forgot to have passwords on them, yes. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure you'll have to ask, uh, ask uh, Mucho Mas. Right. I like the yell or the asshole one. That's when somebody picked up a yelling man. Um, um, yeah, the government of Hong Kong. And you can see where there's, there's just a straight row of them. Right. And a lot of those were... Um, Accent uh, terminal servers uh, through those strips. Um, I think I found one in there that was like a, a secure fax. That, that's oh, that how it identified weird. it itself. It was an encrypted fax thingy. That was weird. Yeah. But, yeah, it was something like that. Um, you know, Zimbabwe. <laughs> Not too many modems there. It's like maybe, <laughs> what, two or three? But and those uh, came, was that the one that came up with the type BBS now, or is that the different country? Yes, that was. Okay, yeah, we kept calling up Zimbabwe, and it said to log in, type BBS, and then you would type BBS, and then it would just Sit hang there. up on you. Yeah. So I guess their BBS was down. And here's Iran. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty um, right. <laughs> empty. I think, I think the case in a lot of, a lot of countries that don't use um, Roman a Roman alphabet, Roman-based alphabet, is that um, you know they don't have the character set for it. So a lot of these probably have fax machines. Case, and well, you know, carriers are carrier. You can always have fun with carriers. <laughs> so that's that's Iran, but we didn't really get a whole lot of dialogue. We got quite a bit done with Iran, but we were looking for things. Um, and then Israel, just to balance things out. Right, because we didn't want to just pick on Iran, so we did Israel for a while. And you can see where you know the black areas are um, where I haven't called, and then the gray areas are the ones that I actually have. And and I did those as an example of, well, you know, you see a few that are starting to line up, and then you just really kind of call in there, and it really expands it out uh, as far as you know the density of modems. And actually, we're going to take some uh, Q and A, but we actually have a question for you guys because we're not. If anybody knows what the hell this thing is, what is a BIOS command string? <laughs> Has anybody ever seen this thing? I'm serious. We don't know what it is. So, <laughs> and it's just that's it's open. This is you connect, and this is what it presents. We just don't know what they what they want from us. Well, I mean, uh, this was in uh, the UK. And, and that's one of the fun things, too. You find all these obscure things. Like, we couldn't even find on freaking Google very much about this damn thing. So, 
Yeah, global <laughs> thermal <laughs> nuclear war, yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, we're That's open it. for any kind of Q&A and any questions if you have any. Uh-oh, T-Profit. make it hot in the throne room? <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. Um, <laughs> actually, yeah, there are um, environmental control systems that are still using dial-up modems. A lot of them. I think that's what that. That's what be. I think that's what this is. Yeah. yeah. Was that around Buckingham Palace? Who knows? What's up? Maybe. I do, I do a lot of pen testing. Right. Uh, with that, I do a lot of war dialing, and I found all kinds of interesting things. With my phone bill get really expensive. Um, so I'm looking to do exactly what you're doing here. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, we're using mostly, uh, there's a company called Voight Buster that we'll use occasionally because they don't seem to care how many times we dial. Like some companies, you know, like New Phone, they'll probably notice if you dial 8,000 numbers and kind of get pissed. Um, but some companies, I guess Voight Buster is one of them. Voightjet doesn't seem to mind, but I wouldn't recommend it with them. Um, where's this at? Uh, this is just another one that uh, I found out there that was just... Configuration errors detected. Yeah. I mean, this is essentially, you, know, you see the sim calling, dial out, oh. and it's just sort of open there. It's just re kind of requesting uh, information. And there was something else about um, uh, what you were saying. Uh, I meant to put it in this talk, but uh, the Department of Homeland Security has a, a great document um, called uh, uh, Practical Security for Modems or something like that. And they highly recommend my iWar program, which really, really <laughs> just cracked me up. I was like, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> uh, 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 right on. I wish I'd put some more Russia stuff, because there's lots of fun stuff on yeah. Russia, but whatever. Um, you find a lot of old legacy systems, old, you'll sometimes even run into like old Vaxes, Vanguard routers I found in Russia. Um, have we, you know, we've been trying to connect to, there's uh, one called China Pack, I believe it is. And that one we haven't really had very much luck with. Oh. So, yeah, this, pretty much this is stuff that we're finding in like Zimbabwe. If you go up a little bit, yeah. you'll see up, that. Up where? Go up, and the, you just passed by one that was oh. interesting. Okay. That was Zimbabwe. Yeah, I see the, there's the, yeah, type BBS. That was when we kind of touched on earlier. Right, right. Uh, um, oh. What were you looking for? Oh, I guess we need your laptop. Oh, there, there you, you go. That one right here. Want oh, open router? Yeah. <laughs> um, oops. Um, don't do that. And yeah, that was, in, uh, that was actually in the Kremlin. Yeah, so that's great. Now we're going to mysteriously disappear. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, the little dart thing that, or whatever it was. Um, anyways, you find all kinds of stuff. I mean, I, I always speak, thinking of X25 whenever you ask that question. But you find a lot of old legacy like uh, equipment and systems and everything from like old Vaxes to uh, RS6000s under AIX. I found Linux boxes on those X25 networks. So it's, it's a great range. Some stuff that you're just like, what the hell is this? Back in the, um, when Telenet was still alive, uh, I used to have this great NUA that I would show my friends. And it, you know how when you go to the airport and it gives you the display of like, you know, flights leaving and whatnot? You would connect up to it and it connect you to Hong Kong and it was like this display like that. And I would show my friends that like, you know, they're like, wow, you're a complete dork. <laughs> but I just thought it was really cool, so. Um, oh, hey, you BT should show them the BT banners. banner. Yeah. They have the best banners in the world. It makes you want to hang up. They're like, we will hunt you down. Oh, you oh, kind of got cut, cut off there. Are there any other type of uh, questions? Anything? Shoot. Uh, have you, have you had a lot of luck uh, adding them for like three one one type numbers? Because I found like you can dial the time number in Moscow. Right, right. 100 by dialing like 100 mm, No, not, not very much so. Um, typically, 
I think, like for instance, India, they never meant for us here in the United States to be able to connect up to their network and probably don't want us to be able to connect up to your network. So we had to actually do a lot of research to find the modems. Or actually, Jay Falcon had to do a lot of research. But, but if you have a dial-up in that local country, I mean, the way Oh, yeah, then you'd be golden, yeah. Some box, I mean, we were connected by VoIP and some box in Moscow would probably just dial it out. Right, right, then you'd probably be golden, yeah. Uh, Which were you? Uh, is that telephone? Hey, Siemens, point. What's that? A Siemens My Path thing is a PBX. That's what I thought. Uh, uh, oh, that one dial that we're showing, you mean? Yeah, that's the, uh -huh. that's the command interface to a PBX. It could very well be. Oh, it could be, yeah. yeah the same idea. All right. <laughs> yeah, not in Goa, but to try someplace a little more popular. Oh, didn't you have to change the search option? <laughs> I did. Um, anyways, I don't know how much time. Six hundred oh. and six thirty eight, we're way ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so direct research. And I actually still call into some BBSs and but they're kind of fun to read. There's always like two old guys who are still calling in and chatting with each other. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah, that would make three. Yeah. Actually I don't I just read what they say. I'm like, hey, Bob, you gonna meet me for beer tonight? I'm like, <laughs> what's like the most insecure, craziest thing about um, We can't comment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would be. Um, we found lots of like on, like on X25 networks and stuff like that. We've seen routers that, um, you know, that don't have any password or just have like you accidentally hit enter and then it lets you on you're like holy crap so you disconnect you're like shit i didn't mean to do that oh really oh that's nice <laughs> i'm sure they did actually we thought we were going to be fine on our time the one other thing that we've done really silly over voip is anybody uh, run NTP servers by any chance? Okay, um, have you ever played with, uh, NTP has a dialer function built into it. So you can dial into the NIST and they still run their dial-up. So you kind of see where this is going. You configure it to go over VoIP to call there to get your time and then you become a stratum one server which is kind of ridiculous because the latency and whatnot. But it, that was one really bored afternoon. And I was like, <laughs> I wonder if I can get this to work. Holy shit, it did. Well, I think we're about done, yeah. unless there's any more. Any more questions? Yeah. Sorry we ran so quick. Hmm? Got another quick question. Shoot. Uh, you pictured the Linksys uh, VoIP uh, adapter. Yes. Uh, are they all pretty much the same, or are they really shitty? Um, well, how do you mean? I mean, they're just a VoIP adapter. They're just about as good. I mean, I, we use like a lot of different adapters. I use PAP2s and Digium's yeah. adapter and stuff like that. But I mean, as long as it does ULaw or MULaw and like, you can I have about like 50 or 60 modems that I'm going to be Awesome. Running. You're catching up with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, uh, kind of like you, yeah, I have a crap load of modems because I'm just, you know, some modems do certain tasks better than others, you know. Um, uh, eBay. For trash. Trash. <laughs> Salvation Army, yeah. Yeah, Salvation Army. And those, uh, the one that I particularly like to use is the USR Courier V everything because it, it's pretty nice and makes dialing really fast. So if you can find on eBay like 10 or 15 of those, you'll be. My, my company said, oh, we don't really need this anymore. I do. <laughs> right, right. That's kind of what we end up doing. So. All right. Well, oh. Shameless plug time. Oh, yeah, we have a little shit. Just selling Jason Scott's uh, BBS documentary right here for 40 bucks. If you don't have it, you should get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All righty. Well, I guess we're done here unless there's any more questions. Thank you very much for coming out for our talk. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>